Hey, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here checking in on the live stream for a quick update video on earthquake activity around the globe here. Uh, it is August 5th or August 19th, 2020, about 7 12 p.m. West Coast time, and uh, pretty smoky out here. A lot of ash fall in Northern California, especially around my neck of the woods. Not a good thing, it's uh, pretty thick. I showed that on my uh, just my last live video here. Uh, so go check it out if you didn't get a chance. Uh, latest earthquake on the globe is a 2.9. Looks like right around the Oklahoma region. Of course, they have been seeing a little bit of earthquake activity over the past week. Uh, it has died down, but it's kind of, well, just happened to pop up right now with that 2.9. Big story out there in the west, United States area, California. Check that out here on a different map. Right here we go. The USGS map right here. This is the uh, all magnitudes map here from those folks. And uh, it's back out a little bit. Still some increase in earthquake activity out here in Nevada. That's been going on for quite some time there. It uh, doesn't look like it's going to let up anytime soon. Some new earthquake activity to talk about. This uh, newer earthquake activity is to the north and northeast of the Ridgecrest region. Kind of strange, right? We haven't seen too much earthquake activity out here in this range of the mountains. Uh, it's very, pretty close to the Hunter Mountain Fault. If we zoom in a little bit closer here, we can see that it's pretty much right on one of these little fractures of the Hunter Mountain Fault system here. And that's uh, kind of an area of potential, especially around here, of a larger magnitude. Not nothing big, but I'll show you the uh, estimates here in just a second. But that specific fault system right there is the Hunter Mountain Fault, Hunter Mountain section. And that's pretty much within, uh, what, about half a mile or so, mile at the most, from that fault system. They had a uh, 4.8 magnitude quake here, strike, in that blue circle. That kind of triggered, of course, all this aftershock activity in the region. Not a whole lot of population out there. I don't know if any population's out there, but a 4.8 definitely being felt over Southern California uh, around certain areas here. Uh, we can check out that map here and uh, let's see here did you feel it responses and we can get an idea of where this was felt at death valley where it was what 130 degrees there a couple days ago Whew. Uh, looks like lone pine some ridgecrest folks felt it as well and uh, also some other areas reported some light shaking from that earthquake there in southern california You know, kind of out there more in the desert, you know, not a super highly populated region, but uh, definitely kind of a surprise, right, on that uh, specific fault out there. Let's go ahead and bring this back here and show you guys how many aftershocks have taken place following that 4.8. See over here on this list, quite a few ones, maybe an up or two there. That's about it. You know, no major aftershocks. The potential, I guess, is there. For an aftershock uh, quake, I don't know what these guys are. Uh, let's see if they got their. Uh, did they get rid of that? They did kind of have, like, have like a forecasting uh, shake scenario, but maybe that's on a. Uh, maybe that's on just some larger quakes there. But uh, either way, getting back to the specific fault out here. Uh, the Hunter Mountain Fault, right? Kind of look this up here on the Caltech Education website here. Uh, it tells you a little, a little bit about that Hunter Mountain Fault. It's right lateral strike slip with some normal slip. Length about 40 kilometers or so. Not a big fault system out there. Um, most recent surface rupture during this period. Slip rate between 2 and 3 mil millimeters a year. Uh, what have we got? Average over the last three million years? Okay. So interval between major ruptures is unknown at the time. Probable magnitudes within this area, within this specific fault area, looks like their guesstimate 6.2 to 7.2 magnitude quake there. So the potential is there for a larger quake in that region. Uh, but today 4.8 uh, being the largest so far. Uh, there is a note here. Uh, looks like this lean valley faults may rupture simultaneously. With a Hunter Mountain Fault, this fault may also be linked to a hypothetical very low angle normal fault under northern 
Uh, what's that? Panamint Valley? I'm not for sure where that's at. Fall into Panamint. Okay. So yeah, just a little bit of uh, info on that new earthquake that took place earlier today. Way, way earlier. I was out kind of getting away from the smoke with my nephew uh, when that earthquake came through there. But uh, let's look at the other areas around Southern California. I don't believe Salton Sea has seen any type of increase in activity down here. Looking, uh, uh, looking pretty minimal. Especially right there on that uh, in that region some older quakes there as well so no swarming going on there uh, we'll hit shoot up here to the north real quick take a look at the activity up near Willits California they did have some interesting activity there uh, a while back about yesterday or so latest map here shows a uh, kind of a weird angle here you guys see that little spreading out region kind of strange normally it would run I, I would expect possibly to see it run uh, a different angle than that so we'll have to keep an eye on that um, anyway looking at these quakes here uh, what do we got a lot of micro quakes no major no other major quakes here within this region uh, which is Willits right about here activity kind of spreading out you know I don't know exactly if they've reviewed all of these or not but just kind of kind of strange you know we got all sorts of fires up there in the coastal range too it's not a good thing so pressure still out here on the west coast folks and uh, it is what it is we'll deal with it we'll deal with the fires and we'll deal with the uh, earthquakes as they come Idaho real quick just some normal activity I guess normal right Idaho normal earthquake activity I'd say it's about average as far as the aftershock sequences that we have seen for quite some time now in the Idaho area no uh, no major quakes or major aftershocks to report it's still kind of kind of just swarming out there you know they're aftershocks it is a swarm in a way uh, especially since it's been conti continuing for so long now Tremor map, real quick, this is over the last four days since the 16th, right? Today is the 19th, well, technically, these guys have it set as the 20th, I'm not for sure why, unless I'm behind. Uh, so, about three or four days ago, a little bit of, you guys see this activity right here? Look at, anybody that, see, anybody that uh, knows about this trimmer or watches it would look at this and think that is not normal I have never seen that before right sometimes we'll see periodic um, we'll see some periodic clusters like that that's normal activity we see that all up and down the Cascadia subduction zone that's what this map is all about is to monitor the slow slip movement along the Cascadia subduction zone and this here is normal this activity in a linear line is not. That is what's kind of strange, and this could have something to do with the activity that's taking place on the surface near Willits, California, right? Willits up here or down there? You guys can see that. I remember this activity is way down in the Cascadia subduction zone, the slippage area, the slipping area. These are not surface quakes, these are trimmers that's being recorded with super sensitive equipment on a different frequency uh, compared to the earthquakes. You know, earthquakes make a certain frequency. These guys, Trimmer, makes a, a def definitely different compared to an earthquake. So this linear fashion is just kind of strange how it would pop up here right around the area that we're seeing the uh, strange activity in Northern California. You know, that, that uh, activity shooting out towards the east which is strange here in Willits now something's going on down there that's causing some weird twisting of the surface above I guess I can use that word see what I mean it's just strange now if we had seen you know like kind of like a cluster I would consider that normal but this is way out there way further kind of a little bit further south than I normally would see I've always seen them right around 
cut off line for the most part right around the Mendocino Triple Junction over here. But this is well south of the uh, of that area, and just in a strange line, folks. Not a cluster, just a. It's weird. Like I say, if you watch this, if you watch this channel and or or check these slow slip maps yourself, you'll realize that that's just not normal. We don't see this too often. So what it means, I don't know. There's something going on down there that's. Uh, that's just not normal. We just don't see it all that often. So I keep repeating myself on that, but it's strange, definitely, and interesting, right? There's that word again. So we'll keep an eye on it. Just like, always good to be prepared out there, for sure. Um, and like I say, that was over the past uh, three or four days. If you just want to do today, we can zoom that real quick on the uh, 19th. Let's go ahead and check that real quick. Search. Oops. So what's going on there? 19th. Wait a minute. I think I hit the 18th. That'll work. Two days ago or so. So it looks like that activity that I was talking about there north of Willits was a little bit older. But it's still having some effects up on the surface, right? Some surface quaking going on there around the Willits area. Anyway, folks, um, I'm going to jump off here. Hope everyone has a great Wednesday night. It just reminded me I got uh, I got garbage day tomorrow. I got to take the garbage out, that's for sure. I got a splitting headache just from all this smoke and ash. It's unreal. It's not, uh, it's definitely not <clears throat> healthy. And um, hoping it goes away real soon, but uh, I just I don't think it will some big fires up uh, to the west of me and they're not uh, they're way up in rugged terrain you know six seven thousand mountain uh, tops there elevation wise <clears throat> so definitely uh, hard to get in there and fight those fires sometimes it's good to just let them let them uh, burn themselves out but man it's making for some uh, horrible air quality out here so <clears throat> have a good day folks we'll chat to you guys a little bit later and uh, stay safe out there